I just finished 90 days eating only meat. And today I want to tell you all about it. My name is Jenny. I'm a first time mom to twins, Max and Harry. They are currently 17 months old. And two of the reasons that I started this way of eating in the first place, the first was my husband. He wanted to try carnivore out. I was a little hesitant, but I did some research, watched some videos, read some books, and I decided I would give it a shot. The second reason, a big motivator for me besides you know, supporting my husband, I wanted to lose some weight. I had 22 more pounds to lose of the 69 pounds I had gained during that twin pregnancy. And it was pretty stubborn. It wasn't coming off as fast as I'd like. After watching all of these videos to research, I had, you know, discovered that some people were losing some significant weight on the carnivore diet. So that was kind of a big motivator for me. I did a full 30 day update video that I will link at the end of this video. So if you wanna check that out, that really gets down into the nitty gritty, including a DEXA scan and some continuous glucose monitor data that I think you would find really, really interesting. But let's talk about the full 90 day period now. And when we're done with this, you can jump back if you wanna get into that video. The version of carnivore that I did during the 90 days was all animal products, so all meats, and then we did butter and eggs. I did a little bit of dairy, but I ended up cutting that out mostly because I wasn't losing as much weight during the second month and I was eating more dairy during that month. So I kind of cut that out just to, just to tighten back up and then the weight started coming off again. So not a lot of dairy in my version of the carnivore diet. So what did I eat? We ate a ton of quick steak, eggs, burgers, some McDonald's burgers, pork chops, shrimp, tuna packets, steaks, crab meat. We would go to Costco and buy ribeye roasts between 17 and 20 pounds and cut our own ribeye steaks. So that was a way that we saved money and it ended up working out really, really well. And then as far as cooking fats that we would use, we used butter. We rendered our own tallow from breaking down that ribeye roast. We were able to get a couple of pounds of fat that we would then render into our own tallow. And we also used a lot of bacon grease. So all of those food items that I mentioned before, we were having that with copious amounts of animal fat. I would say my average ratio of fat to protein was like 70-30, but I was really, really trying to get it up to 80% fat, 20% protein. I did exercise during this 90 day period. I typically take a walk four to six times a week, two miles. And the past couple of weeks, I have started jogging again. Uh, on the second lap, I'll do a bit of jogging and then walk, a bit of jogging and then walk. My goal is to get up to where I can jog one mile, but I'm taking it slow because I don't wanna injure myself. That would just stop all the exercise in its tracks and we don't want that. So in addition to the walk slash jog that I do most days, I also have been trying to go to the gym two to four times per week to do some strength training. Nothing crazy, I just go into the sauna for 15 minutes, do a lot of stretching, and then I come out and I do like five to six machines. I don't have the same amount of strength that I did when I was eating more carbs, well really any carbs. So I am just listening to my body, taking it easy, but still trying to get a really good workout when I'm there. I'm also just trying to focus on being consistent. I want to just get into the habit of being at the gym two to four times per week. And then from there, as my strength slowly comes back, I can, you know, go harder on the weights. As far as keto flu symptoms during this 90 day period, the first 30 days were the hardest. I had some uh, electrolyte issues, fatigue, low energy. I had some sleep disturbances, uh, diarrhea, and a bit of constipation. Most of that, if not all of it, was cleared up by week six. And I currently, to avoid any electrolyte issues, I drink 16 ounces of water in the morning that has a squirt of the Keto Chow electrolyte drops and two drops of Lugol's 5% iodine. And that seems to really help with any kind of electrolyte issues I haven't encountered any since week six. Let's talk about some continuous glucose monitor data. In the 30 day update video, I go into that data extensively, but let's talk about just some averages over the 90 day period here. I am using the NutriSense app. So I am not diabetic. This is just for me to see how food, you know, makes my blood glucose go up and down. It's, it's really fun, actually. I've really enjoyed having this data. I'm kind of a, 
I love data. I love knowing what's going on in my body. I love blood tests, DEXA scans, and, and this continuous glucose monitor has just been another part of that. So I'm gonna pop some data up on the screen. I'll divide it up into 30, 60, and 90 days. And the measurements that we are going to be looking at here, you can find in the NutriSense app. So the first one is my glucose average, followed by my morning glucose average, and then my variability. And you'll see from 30 days to 60 days to 90 days that it has been very stable, typically in the 60s and 70s. And the variability has been very, very, very small, which is great. That just basically means that my blood glucose isn't just spiking all the time, which is what typically happens when you're eating a diet full of carbs and sugar. Even if the carbs that you're eating are slow carbs or fruits or things like that, it's still sugar. So you're still going to have these ups and down spikes. When I'm eating carnivore, I don't have those spikes. And that is exactly what I thought would happen. It's just really nice to see it confirmed in the data. Pretty cool. If you want to try NutriSense, I'm not sponsored by them. I would love to be, but I'm not currently sponsored by them. So I will put a link in the description below that'll take you over to the website so you can look at pricing and just kind of look at everything that's involved in the continuous glucose monitoring with NutriSense. All right, the moments you've all been waiting for. How much weight did I lose during this 90 day carnivore experience? So I started off on day one at 194.8 pounds. And on day 90, I ended up weighing 179.2 pounds. That is a total of 15.6 pounds over the 90 day period. Let's break that down by month. The first 30 days, I lost eight pounds. The next 30 days, I only lost two pounds. That's when I was eating more dairy. So I cut all that out so I could lose more weight. That was not enough weight for me to be losing. So the last 30 days, I ended up losing 5.6 pounds. So 15.6 pounds. Let's talk about my measurements. I lost some significant inches during this 90 day period as well. I'm going to talk about four measurements. So first chest, and then waist. And then I do a measurement where I measure around my belly button. I call that the belly measurement. And that is specific for me because of pregnancy weight. I gained a lot of weight right there. So I like to take that measurement. And finally hips. So let's talk about chest first. I started off on day one at 44 inches. And at day 90, I was 42 inches for a total loss of two inches over that 90 day period for my chest. Next is my waist. I started off day one at 37 inches and finished at day 90 at 34.5 inches. So I lost a total of two and a half inches. Next is that belly measurement. The way I do that is I just measure right around my belly button area. That started off at 40.5 and ended up at 37. So I lost a total of two and a half inches around my belly. Finally, the hips. I started off at 44 inches and I went down to 43 inches for a loss of one inch around my hips during a 90 day period. So the bulk of my weight loss loss was in my trunk area, especially around my waist and my belly area, which is amazing. I am down two dress sizes. So that's so cool. I'm very, 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 very happy about my weight loss of 15.6 pounds and a total of eight inches that I've lost on my body. I'm feeling pretty damn good. My sleep has gotten better since I had the keto flu symptoms. I'm sleeping longer and getting to sleep more easily. My mental health is amazing. I don't have all of those, you know, ups and downs that I used to have when I was eating more carbs or really any carbs. So mentally I feel great. My strength, like I said earlier in the exercise portion, my strength is not 100% what it used to be, but it is getting better. I've noticed it improved over this 90 day period. And I know it's just going to keep getting better and better. So at this point, I am just listening to my body and, you know, still trying to get a good workout in. But when I need to rest, I'm definitely resting. Let's talk about some plans moving forward. So I had started off this whole thing just being like, all right, I'll do it for 30 days. And then I was like, okay, 60, okay, 90. And now I'm currently working through my next 30 days. And I have a goal of getting obviously to my pre-pregnancy weight of 173.2. But from there, I have a larger goal that will take up probably the next 10 months after I get to my pre-pregnancy weight. And I would like to lose 40 pounds by the time I turned 40. I just recently turned 30 
39. So I'll have about 10 months to accomplish this goal. And I really just want to be in the best shape of my life by the time I turn 40. I just had kids at age 37. So I'm an older mom. I want to be happy and healthy and able to show them the world. And I just want to be in the best shape of my life by the time I start that next decade. So that's a huge, huge, huge goal of mine moving forward. Related to the carnivore diet, I think I'm just going to do the carnivore diet up until that point. And then from there, I mean, who knows? I'm feeling really great. I kind of see myself doing the carnivore diet for a long time, maybe the rest of my life. Probably incorporate a few vegetables in though. I really enjoy a good salad and I love Brussels sprouts and asparagus and broccoli. So for the weight loss portion, I think what I'm going to do is do my 30 day chunk of just carnivore. And then on that day 30, day 31, have a ketovore kind of day where we do a keto cheat. Uh, have a salad, have some Brussels sprouts with cheese and bacon. We made this delicious keto bread. It wasn't really bread, it was kind of like a flatbread made with Greek yogurt, mozzarella cheese, and eggs. Tasted just like bread, it was amazing. And I definitely am gonna do that again, but I wanna keep all of my cheats keto. So they're not really cheating, you know? It's not like I'm eating a bowl of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, which I would love to do, but it would just spike my blood sugar so much I would feel like crap, so why even bother at this point? I have a greater goal in mind. Next is DEXA scans. So I got a DEXA scan after day 30, and I'm going to be getting another DEXA scan after day 120. I just wanna get them probably every three to four months just so I can continue to see where the fat is coming off and make sure I'm maintaining my lean mass. DEXAs are also great for scanning internally, so you can see if you have visceral fat. My visceral fat has always been pretty low and it, it dropped last time from, I think, 2.24 pounds down to 1.89, and I wanna just continue to see that drop. So I will definitely be getting another DEXA scan. Another measurement that I'm going to be getting, I'm going to get some extensive blood testing done after day 120, sometime in May, 2023. I have a whole list of blood tests that I got from Dr. Ken Baird one of his videos, I'll link that video in the description below, that I'm going to have my doctor order. And I'm gonna add a couple of other things and I will be sharing those results with you. I anticipate seeing an increase in total cholesterol, which is totally fine. Total cholesterol is kind of an arbitrary number. My triglycerides, which is very important, have already been super low and my HDL was pretty high. So those are your two really important numbers. I also wanna see about my LDL. LDL, has kind of been demonized. Um, that's kind of a number that a lot of people don't necessarily understand. And on the carnivore diet, some people see their LDL go up, but that's because LDL is made up of two particles. You've got your small and dense, and you've got your light and fluffies. The light and fluffies are actually good. You want to have those. It's the small dense ones that have been damaged by blood glucose over time that it's having your, your system is having trouble clearing those out. You don't want those. So in addition to the lipid panel, just the you know normal lipid panel, I'm also going to get an LDL particle size blood test. And what that's going to tell me is in my LDL number, is it small and dense or is it the light and fluffies or what combination of the two is it? Because if I have a shit ton of light and fluffy LDLs, that's actually good. And you're not gonna get that from a traditional blood test. So super excited about the blood test data. I will be sharing that with you very soon. And finally, I would like to incorporate more fasting into this carnivore diet. I've been able to do between 16 to 20 hour fasts, but I would really like to work up first to a 24 hour fast. And then I would like to do a 36 hour fast, probably every two weeks, just to get some autophagy going, clear out my system, get all the dead gross cells out, out. Fasting is really, really good for that. So I am taking it slow. I am listening to my body and I am just seeing and, you know, seeing where I can get with the fasting. But that is a goal for the next 30 days and beyond. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are, you know, doing some research yourself, trying to figure out if you would like to try the carnivore diet, I totally recommend it. I think it's great. You know, there's a lot of healthy ways to eat and I am in no way saying that this is the only way that it is healthy for people to eat. I think, you know, eating whole foods 
and cutting ultra processed foods and sugar and vegetable oils from your diet can benefit everybody. But you know, I don't know if carnivore is pretty extreme. I don't know if that would work for everybody. So, you know, take this with a grain of salt, but if you would like to try it, I'm here to encourage you. I think you should at least commit to 30 days. And I think once you get through the keto flu symptoms, you will find that you feel a lot better. I'm gonna be doing another update video. I don't know if it'll be at 120 days or 150, probably at 120, but if that video is finished, I will link that right here. Right here, I'm going to link my 30 day update video. Lots of fun information in that one. So hit that subscribe button, great way to support this channel and to let me know that you're enjoying this, this content that I'm making for you. So I will see you next time.